Welcome to the Aftermarket Report, January the 14th. Supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. And we have a great watch list. And it was really an interesting day today. Miss Vegas? Yeah, you know what, everyone? I hope you had an uh, interesting trading day because, I mean, I thought the morning was great. And then the afternoon, there was some, you know, noise in the background. Uh, and you just got to cut out the noise. So today we're going to be talking about uh, just a few tickers here just to keep you in, in uh, focused. We're going to talk about Ulta, Pinterest, Tesla, and INPX. So we are going to get started and just talk about Ulta. So, you know, Ulta um, is, you know, the beauty store and uh, they have so many locations. And you can go there and you can shop and buy all kinds of beauty products and um, supplies. And I got to say, I actually see a lot of men go there too. So on Ulta, uh, we did have a swing trade on this one, actually. We actually bought this last week, and we kind of saw that the chart was ready for a move. We bought the 270 calls expiring January 31st, and on those particular contracts, um, we actually paid 200 and, uh, sorry, $420, I apologize, for that strike. So... We still have a lot of like ways to go, uh, but the thing is, the stock is on track. Um, I am looking to target the stock uh, to do to head towards maybe two nineties, and you know, Jim will talk about that momentarily. But you know, a lot of people uh, hesitated to take the trade uh, only because you know everybody always sometimes wants a contract to be super cheap, and sometimes it's not going to always be like that. Sometimes you have to pay money to make money and you know with the alta contracts i mean had someone just taken just even one contract those contracts went as high as fifteen hundred and thirty seven dollars today so even if you just took one contract from last thursday and today only being um tuesday right um you would have already made uh good money good return already in just a couple days so that's why I really like swing trades. We do call day trades as well, but I really like swing trades with options because you have time and the money is made waiting. So Jim, over to you on the Ulta chart because I still think we have a lot of room to go. Yep. Ulta had a yearly high of right around 368.83. It hovered around there for about six months and then had a huge sell-off. I mean, a huge drop right back on uh, 8.30. 2019 we gradually had lower highs we had a double bottom right there at 222 not 222 but right around I'd say probably right in here right around 225 area and once that second double bottom hit she's ran up and then we had the upgrade today by Oppenheimer for $310 from 275 so that was plastered in the news and I'm kind of bullish on it myself now and we were watching it when it was down here in that 225 area and scalping it down there too. So our next resistance is going to be the yearly pivot point. And it's going to be right around the 286.40 area. And that's right in here. We did pass the 200 EMA on a yearly daily chart today. We broke past that. Right now it's pulled back. Well, we just got one little sell here at 280, but I don't think that's a big deal. It did close at 282.62. And we're going to pull up the 20 day and see if I can find anything on here for supports and resistances. I use a TTM trend squeeze chart with my moving averages of the 200, the 34, and the 9. As you can see, we've been following this 9 up for five days in a row now. And we've almost hit that yearly pivot point at 286.40. So we're going to call a little pullback support level on this thing. And that's going to be right here at 279.26. That should be your first support if it does decide to pull back 279.26. Looks to me like after hours we've got a 284.80 spike on it, about a $2 spike into after hours. Let's go ahead and pull up the daily one minute so I can see if I missed anything. First support is going to be right here at the 281.61 area, or let's make that to second. Let's make the first one right here. If it decides to pull back, I'm not sure, you know, if I could really count this as one, but 283.12. So we got the 283.12, 280, 
161 and then this low support of 279.26 if it decides to pull back. Usually on a daily one minute I'll use this 200 EMA on a breakout stock for another support level. So it can bounce off that 200 EMA. And the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 286.40 and we're on our way up to 300. What was your resistance Miss Vegas did you say? On which one? Oh, um, 295. Okay. 295. And I yeah, think so there's a lot of room here still to trade this if you wanted to get something, you know, for the same expiry, but obviously you'll have to pick a higher strike at this point. Yeah. And I think it long throughout the year, it, it'll probably go higher than that. But, oh, yeah. Like I said, 279.26 for your low low. And that's where we had that, that, that squeeze where it broke out. And then we have the second support at 281.61 and 283.12 with a resistance to break of 286.40. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that I noticed yesterday after hours watching CNBC. And that's PINS, P-I-N-S. Well, you know what, guys? I got to tell you, like, I love Pinterest because of the fact that um, it's just, you know, it's no longer just a, a site that you just go there and pin pictures. I mean, people can go on there and you can actually um purchase so before you could post pictures of things you like and then now you can actually you know if you have an e-com store you can actually post a product on the pinterest website and um you know someone that sees you let's say your product uh likes the picture some people put short little videos that are like 10 20 seconds and you can actually then click the actual picture or the video and it takes you directly to the e-com site without having to leave the Pinterest site. And then you can actually purchase something that you like. So I think that's a really smart concept. Um, also remembering that there was some chatter on Pinterest last week. So keep this in mind uh, that first of all, the revenues on Pinterest um, was the forecast was there. They had adjusted EBITDA on to be between 30 million and 10 million compared to the prior forecast of 50 million and 25. So they did actually beat uh, the last time. This is back in October. But I do want to mention there was chatter last week that there is going to be a potential takeover. That is the rumor out there in the market. Is this really going to be happening? We don't know. Um, the other thing, too, is there have been some initiations uh, from some of these um, analysts here. So um, they are looking to uh, rec uh, a buy on Pinterest. And so uh, maybe the rumor could happen and maybe something there somebody will take over Pinterest. You know, I wouldn't be surprised a company like, let's say, Facebook or a company because, you know, Facebook, Facebook has Instagram. Right. So wouldn't be surprised Facebook wants to buy this or maybe someone like Amazon would want to take over Pinterest. Um, so this is going to be interesting to keep on your watch. I love the company still. I actually think it's a good fit with Amazon. Um, so let's see if something happens down the road. But uh, keep Pinterest on your watch. I do want to say we had a fantastic, fantastic trade. And all thanks to Jim today. Jim was all over Pinterest today. Um, he's been babysitting this thing since the weekend and uh, was talking about it nonstop. And uh, he was on it this morning. We took the Pinterest calls. We took the $20.50 contracts um, that expire next week, Jan 24. And um, those were going for 90 cents, which is $90 investment. And they went as high as 202 at, uh, later in the day. We did break Jim's resistance of the $22. So we're gonna hear what Jim's gonna talk about next, but those Pinterest calls uh, did very well. If you do follow us on StockTwits or Twitter, um, you would have heard about this trade and you would have been able to bank and trade this. So those of you that do follow us, um, I will say I got some comments from people that did follow this trade because I did post it in real time and they made over 100%. One person said he made 124%. So we love sharing this information. But if you don't follow us, you're not going to get the alerts. So please follow and subscribe to the StockTwits and Twitter feed. And you can find that information on our website, ilovestocks.com. Jim, over to you on the Pinterest chart, because I love it still. Oh, yeah. I think we're into a short squeeze on 
Pinterest right now. We did come from a bottom. Let me pull this 20 day or look at the yearly chart first. I always like to pull that up on a daily. We had a low bottom down here of 1739, and we've had about oh one, two, three, three and a half weeks of up an uphill climb. And we haven't hit the gap yet. The gap is right around here, right around the 2369 area. Actually, you could go down to the bottom of this wick at 2310. That's going to be one of them. And then we got another one right here. Now, if I was trading this stock, I like this right here, this target price of 2377. So I would even go a month out on this trade, maybe, and look for that target price, that strike price of $24. And that would be my little entry. That's where the 200 EMA is right now at 2411. Now I'm going to show you where I think it can pull back to for an idea of entry. I always like to play the pullbacks. I call myself the pullback king. We're going to bring this right to, let's go to the 20 day first, 20 day, one hour. I've got different support levels here. Probably should have brought it down just a little bit here to the $20 mark. That's where I kind of mentioned it today. If it $20 was my target for to get in the trade, it was lower in that pre-market. It got down here about 1975, and I said if we got back to 20, 2009, that'd be the time to jump in the trade and maybe take it for the rest of the day. Then we had these three big white soldiers on the hour chart, one, two, three, and usually when you see three white soldiers, you'll have a little pullback, and that's exactly what happened. That support level right there at 2114, 2124, excuse me. So we're after hours, we we're, we're, we had us a little spinning top right here. Along with that spinning top, we went ahead and that base went above that spinning top, which identifies that it's still bullish. We have a resistance that we need to break tomorrow or tonight at 2193. We have a hard resistance that we need to break, and that's going to be that 2214. So your first support, let me put this trend line right in here. I don't want to see it go no lower than this $21. If it does, $21.83 or right down here at the $21.58 area for a strong buy. I'm going to turn that into a red line. If I see $21.58, I'm going to jump in this trade. That first support level is going to be right here at 2124. If it pulls back to that, that's going to be your first idea of entry. The second channel right in here, second supports 2183 to 2102, and then that low support down here at 2059. Resistance to break is going to be that first one at 2193 up to 2214. I just want to go. To the, I should, probably should have checked the one minute daily, see if I missed anything. No, I did not. Everything's lined up just perfect. You know, I kind of see how these line up. You see, there's different places you can miss when you pull it up to that daily one minute, but this is perfect. This is spot on. Resistance that we got to break is going to be that 2214, and that's your hard resistance. And she'll run up to that 23 area, then to 24. I'm real bullish on this trade, just as much as I was on Tesla. Not as much, but Tesla and um, Bind, B-Y-N-D. And but low support, 2058. Resistance to break, 2214. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that I just mentioned, and that is Tesla. Well, you know Tesla. I mean, everyone's you know watching this on the news. Everyone's. You know, it's they're talking about Tesla. I mean, this stock is definitely going to be listed on the S and P 500 in 2020. I don't know when, but we know it's going to eventually get listed on there. Um, you know, Tesla price target was raised by Deutsche Bank today at 455. Also raised to 600 dollars from Jeffries. So you know, Tesla uh, had its you know part uh, targets raised. Also saw some activity on the put side today. Um, you know, nevertheless, I mean, Tesla still had a good run. I mean, still overall today, I mean, the stock's low of the day was 524.90. High of the day was 547.41. And I mean, even now we're around 540. So, I mean, still the stock had a very nice pop from yesterday's close. 
So, you know, Tesla should still be something that people watch and obviously trade what's in front of you. Um, but Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on Tesla because it had its run pulled back to some lows of the day. And then, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's still $7 off from the high, but still holding quite well. You, you, won't, you wouldn't believe this. What? Let's hear it. Uh, some lady named Catherine, Catherine Wood told CNBC oh, on yeah. Tuesday. And she, she's very smart, by the way. She sees Tesla going to $6,000 a share in five years. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. 6, and by 000. the way, that woman is very, very smart. I know it sounds crazy, but um, her name's Kathy, right? Yeah, I have $1,700 target myself. In if you guys years. Google her name, you'll see her history. Super smart woman. Very smart. Catherine wow. Wood. Yes, Type very that smart. in and CNBC. But wow, <laughs> 6000 I was That's thinking amazing. More, I was thinking 1700 in five years. Wow, this could be like the next Amazon. Yeah. So let's, and there's a lot of, lot of reasons behind that. I mean, they've got everything. They've got more satellites in space. They've got, so I've talked about this yesterday. You know, they're just, they're, they're all over the field. They got spaceships, they got electric cars, they got solar shingles, they got battery packs. I mean, the, the, who knows what else they're going to have within that five year period. And I think the secret game to this is keep letting these cars roll out and be having these profitable quarters. If we get four profitable quarters, we're going to be on the S and P. So let's look at the stock. Let's look at the yearly stock. We've had, you know, with the shocking right here, pre-market, we had that double dip and she went ahead and pulled on back to low support of 525. I had a support level for a pullback right here at 522. So I was, wasn't off very much on that, on that call. Five, about 523 I was just off a couple bucks and it did re recover real fast it recovered real fast I mean it ran back up found resistance up here right around the 243.80 area and then she kind of pulled back again and then we had another nice little run to a quadruple top four times it couldn't do that and then that news came in about the fake news about the uh tariff deal and uh, everything just tanked it was a great opportunity to jump in that trade even at 4 5 34 and it ran back up there was another uh nine dollar bounce right there just off that so this is going to be one that's going to be very volatile i think today it closed very well with a pennant flag we have kind of like you know a flag right here a symmetrical flag and she's right in the middle of it she's above the pivot point which was right around the 537.47 area. So the resistance that we need to break on this one come tomorrow, if it decides to go ahead and move up, is going to be that 546.33. My long target on this is going to be, like Miss Vegas said, $600. Some have it a little higher. But I th the pullbacks on this, I mean, this has really got the people blowing their whistles. So we just got to keep a good eye on it. Keep it on your watch list. I'm going to go ahead and call what I think is going to be a low support at 532.60. I'm going to turn that into a red line. So I'll know that come tomorrow. If this thing pulls out to about that 532.60, I'm going to be jumping back in it. Right now, I don't hold a position. I should have probably jumped in it on this dip right here. I thought about it, and then I thought about it right. Oh, I did scalp this today. I take it back. I did scalp it on a call. I, I'm not going to look it up right now, but I did scalp it and I made made about eighty dollars on it. Not a lot of money, but you know it was a fast scalp. Took my profit and then the sucker dipped on me, so I was thankful that I did get out. But then she went ahead and run back up to the day highs, and that's going to be Tesla. The resistance that we need to break, like I said, is going to be that five forty six thirty two. The low support is going to be 532.60. The second one, let me adjust this up a little bit. Yeah, there's a support right here too. I can't leave that one out. We'll make this in here the third support. This will be your strong buy at 532.60. Your third one will be 535.57.
Your second one's going to be right here at 537.47. And then we got to break this resistance right here, pivot point, right at 540.07. If we can break that pivot point in this channel today, we'll go ahead and ride her on up and try to break that 546.33. Then we got one more that we're going to mention. It's going to be INPX. Yes, and you know, INPX actually had some news. And the news was that they're extending their patent protection for the mobile device tracking and management right into Canada. So there was some volume yesterday on the stock. They also did provide, this is really important, they did provide business update and they reaffirmed a positive outlook for 2020. Um, remember that this company also had a reverse split uh to get the nasdaq compliance right and yep. that just happened last week so definitely keep a watch on this um you know there is room here on the stock uh definitely swing trading this at the moment and on inpx i had a resistance on here let me just pull it up what i had of six dollars and 41 cents so jim what do you think of INPX? Because it also, the float was rotated as well, correct? Yep. I believe it was. Yeah, float rotated on this today. It's hard to tell any, well. anything on this. We're just going to pull up the 20 day. Yeah. She had a nice little run a couple of weeks ago. That was probably during the split, right? Am I looking at the right stock? INPX, yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. INPX today jumps after receiving patent on a mobile device tracking in Canada. So that's a catalyst for this go ahead and have the breakout, which it did today. That came out in the news today. The next resistance on this is going to be right up in here, right around the 766 area. That's going to be one of your resistance levels. Then you've got a spot right in here I'm looking at that we got to hit. And that's where that 200-day EMA is, right there at 632. Pullback support no lower than this 368, right down here at 362. So, yeah, this is kind of interesting how this thing run here. i got to see what happened there. And it did have a hard sell-off right after that. So your first low support, 362, 489, resistance to break is going to be that 632, and we'll try to run it up here to 766. And that's INPX. Keep it on your watch list, and I'll be watching it tomorrow. And that's it for the aftermarket report. Always remember to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates on our video. And Miss Vegas, let me see what else we have here. I want to check out. We got a Twitter bird. You can hit on our link on our website. We're up. We got five new. We got fifteen new followers yesterday. We're up to wow. nine hundred and fifty-five followers now. Nice. Go ahead, Miss Vegas. You have anything else you'd like? Well, to I was just gonna say no. I'm just gonna say, um, you know, tomorrow there should be the signing of the deal between uh, President Trump and China. So we'll probably hear some uh, information on that as well. So uh, keep your, you know, keep your eyes on the market and uh, let's have a green day tomorrow and follow, subscribe, smash the like button. We'll be putting out more content, like we said. So stay tuned and have a great evening, everyone. And definitely see you all tomorrow. Trade green. Have a great night. This is the aftermarket report. Today's date, January 14th, year of 2020. We love stocks.